types of breaks your bones can suffer from. Yeah. There are different types that you can take. There's something called a stress fracture. Uh, fracture. You ever heard of one of those? That's when that's when you've got too much stress applied to the bone and it starts to crack. Amen. Some people call it a hairline fracture. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really break the bone, but there's a crack there enough to bother you, enough to hurt. When people look at it, unless they're looking real close, it's going to look like it's whole. It's going to look like it's it's intact. But when they start examining that x-ray, they can see those little cracks there. They can see those little places. See, sometimes the enemy will come in and he'll start to put so much stresses on you and you start to get overwhelmed. Just like a sister was testifying about, she knew that God spoke a word. That if she had ever heard God speak, it was about what was to go on with this church. It was about what the foundation was supposed to be laid. But then here come the enemy. And he began to speak those little lies. He began to speak that out. He began to put those little whispers in her ear. And it's just like any other situation. My wife was testifying a while ago. We've had a week and a half. I tell you, if, if there was one way, one way we could turn to look for an attack, it was coming. And the funny thing was, is we should have already been preparing on it. Shame on us for not, not having our guard up. But you see, everywhere we turn, here come another attack. First, it, it was a financial attack. Then he started to attack our family. Then we, we she told you we lost our dog. And we, we, we've raised him since a pup. He was, he was uh, going on two years old. Just like, just like a child to us. We had to bury him yesterday. And... And so we had, we've been really frustrated. We've been really beat up. And we had, to, we had to stop and begin to let God move in that situation. See, if we had just stood there and continued to let that stress build up, we was going to suffer a, a stress fracture. We was going to start to let them cracks come in. Our bones were going to get a little bit broken. But you see, when you can put a stop to the stressor and you can let God lift that burden off, he's, he said that he would carry your burdens. In fact, he told us to take his burden because it's light. He said, he, woo. He said his yoke was easy and his burden was light. So he wanted to make a swap with you. He wanted to give us his problem, which is not anything. And he wanted to take our problem, which seems like everything. So all that stress that keeps piling up and piling up. Here God was ready to take it off. And all he was waiting on us to do was realize that we can't let our situation define our salvation. We have to realize that we have to let go and let God move. Amen. But we were going to become broken. Now there's other types of fractures you can suffer from. There's one called a compound fracture, where the bone just gets absolutely smashed. You ever heard of that? Where it comes in and it just completely shatters it. It's kind of hard to reset a shattered bone, right? You know what they do with that? They have to go in, they begin to operate. They have to do the work from the inside. First. They can't just put a cast over it and hope it's going to get better. See, sometimes we allow ourselves to get put in situations where we get crushed. We get absolutely broken into a million pieces. And God's got to come on the inside and begin to do a work. And you see, when they start to do that surgery, they have to take something that's stronger than that bone in order for it to be held together. So they start to take all these pieces of bolts and these metal plates and they begin to put them in line. And you know what happens to that bone? Then it becomes stronger only set to be healed again, but it's reinforced to be stronger than it was when it first broke down. Amen. You see, when you let God show up on your situation, and you let God begin to do a work, and you let God begin to move on the inside, and begin to clean up, and begin to restore, not only will He take you to a place where you can become healed, but honey, next time an attack comes, you're going to have some reinforcement on your side. You're going to have some spiritual backup. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. And sometimes you might just suffer a broken bone. Just a normal, typical fracture. They'll put it in a cast, or they'll put you in a boot, or they'll put it in a brace, and they'll say, just in time, it's going to heal. See, sometimes we get, in, we get in a situation, and we always start blaming the devil. That old devil. That old devil. That old devil. 
Sometimes we give the devil too much credit. Yeah. We give him a little too much credit. See, he's only able to do what God allows him to do. Amen. See, the, the, the thing is, God could be putting you in a situation where he's saying you need to stop and rest for a little bit. You need to stop and take time to let me begin to mend you. Yeah. You've been broken for far too long. You see, if you don't get that broken bone put into a cast, then it's not going to be able to heal back correctly. You're always going to have problems out of it. You're always going to have pain that begins to set up in it. Come on. But after it's set into that cast, after it sits in that certain position, held back where it's supposed to be, if I was to break my forearm and they put it in a cast... I'd have to wear that cast for a couple months. And then it's going to be healed. Yes. Not going to have to worry about it. It's going to be placed back in the position it needs to go in. Yeah. But you see, it can't heal correctly until I allow the doctor to place it back where it needs to go. Yeah. We can't heal correctly until we allow God to place us where we need to be. Yeah. See, the prodigal son, he had become a broken person. And all of a sudden, a thought rises up. And honey, I don't believe that was the thought of his own doing, but I believe that was the spirit beginning to rise up. And God sending a word and saying, you know where home is? You know where your help's at? You don't have to be broken forever. to be placed back into a position yes. where he needed to be at when he quit running from his father when he quit on, spending his time out there trying to do his own thing and he started listening to what he needed to do and he realized I gotta get to the father's house I gotta get to the presence of my oh, when we realize we've got to get to the presence of our heavenly father we've got to get to the presence of God almighty when we realize we've got in the presence of Jesus. That's when God can begin to mend us. That's when God can be begin to heal all the broken pieces. He can begin to take every He begin can begin to take every hurt, every sorrow, and he can begin to, to heal and restore. See, when that prodigal son returned home, something happened that he didn't expect. He knew that he knew that he had to go back to the Father's house. He knew where he was supposed to be at. A lot of times we know where we're supposed to be at. When we start letting flesh rear up, we know where we're supposed to be at to be in line with the Spirit of God. But we refuse to listen. But see, he had, he had refused so long and finally something opened up his eyes and he said, I've got to get back to where I need to be. I've got to get back where I first was before I become broken. So he returned to the father's house. But before he even made it, before he even got back to the father's house, something happened. His daddy seen him standing far off. And as he was making his way in, his daddy seen him. And he began to have love overwhelming. And he chased him down and met him exactly where he was at. He didn't wait for him to get it all in. But he went and he met them where he was at in his brokenness. See, God will meet you in your situation. It doesn't matter how hard you fall. It doesn't matter how far you've fallen. Honey, when you get back to the presence of God, he will meet you in your brokenness. See, God doesn't desire for you to be a broken person. Sometimes he'll use that brokenness to get you where he needs you to be in order for him to restore you. Yes. Sometimes he'll use that brokenness in order to reinforce you. Amen. But he doesn't desire for you to be a broken person. In fact, the Bible says that he wants you to be more than a conqueror. Yes. The Bible says that Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If you've got an abundance of life, then you can't walk around broken all the time. If you've got an abundance of life, that means that you've got the Spirit of God actively working in you. Amen. Yes. That means that your brokenness has been mended. Thank you, Lord. And so the father ran out and he met him. Met him in the middle of that situation. Met him in the midst of that brokenness. And he just began to wrap his arms around. And it says, I love this next part. It says that, that when he wrapped his arms around him, he kissed him. Yeah. He kissed him. Showed him the same amount of affection. That he would have showed him if he had never left. Yeah. And he didn't even listen to his excuses. He didn't want to hear 
everything that he'd done wrong. All he needed to hear was, Father, I've sinned. And right there he said, go get the fatted calf. Go get this boy a new robe. This one he's wearing is all tattered and torn. He got to get it cleaned up. He said, go prepare us a feast. Yeah. Give me the fine rings. Let me get some shoes on this boy's feet. Come on, brother. Woo. Amen. You see, sometimes you can spend so long walking, your Come feet's going to get tired. If you walk too long, the soles of your shoes is going to wear out. And they're going to start to hurt. But see, God knows when you need a restoration. God knows when you need a fixing, when you need a healing. He's just waiting on you to come back to His presence so He can say, I've already had the healing waiting on you. All you had to do was come in and sit down and begin to feast at the table that I've prepared. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so we come in. Thank you, Lord. And all it took was, Father, I've sinned. I've sinned against you. I've done wrong in your sight. And that's where he stopped him. And he said, go prepare the fatted calf. Go get me the rings. Go get some shoes. And go get me a nice robe. I want to make sure my son is celebrated. We're having us a party. Because we've got one that used to be dead. And yet he's alive again. Oh, honey, let me tell you. If you've been living out in this world, you've been experiencing what it's like to be dead. But when you get back to the presence of God, and you get back to the presence of your father, and you say, Father, I've sinned. Come on, brother. Thank you, Lord. That's when he's got that robe waiting. Yes. That's when he's got that calf prepared. Yes. See, the Bible tells us that he's got a table prepared in the presence That's of our enemies. enemies. See, Amen. there's a feast already waiting on us, honey. There's a feast already waiting on us. All we got to do is come in and take part. All we got to do is be prepared to sit down. It doesn't matter if you've been battling financial struggle. It doesn't matter if your heart's been broken into a million pieces. It doesn't matter if your body's been stricken with sickness. My God's a provider. My God will su- will supply all my needs. Press down in good measure, yes. shaking together and running over. Amen. That means Thank everything you, is going to be taken care of. Yes. That don't mean it's just going to take care of some over here and leave me to worry about the rest. Yes. Come on. You see, the, the prodigal son didn't have to worry about getting shoes on his feet after his daddy gave him a coat. He had to just sit down and let his daddy put some shoes on him. He had to just sit down and let his daddy put a robe on him. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Sit down and begin to eat. And after he come in, he was welcomed and greeted and experienced the celebration, a celebration of life. Yes. Because he used to be dead. Yes. Something happened. Thank you, Lord. We read on. His brother began to get tore up. Here he was out working in the field. He started hearing a commotion going on. He started hearing a bunch of music. He saw people dancing. He asked one of the servants, what in the world's going on here? What's well, everybody just went crazy and quit doing their job? Here I've been out in the field, working my hand in off. Everybody's over here dancing, throwing a party. And the servant tells him, says, thank you for the bed and calf. Your brother has returned home. I don't know about you, but if I heard that, heard that someone that was lost out in this world, oh, yeah. I heard that well, I've got a new brother or sister yes. that's come back in, or learned that, that there's been someone who's given their life over to Jesus, yes. that's going to make me a little happy. Yes. I'm yes. going to give that for joy. Amen. Woo. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But you see, that's the problem with the church world today. Come on. We've got these people who's been in this for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Some 5, 10, 15. Somebody who's spent their whole life out here sinning, they'll come into the church and start receiving blessing after blessing after blessing. Why? They, they can't be saved. Come on. How are they come feeling on. the Spirit of God like come that? On. They've only been saved for five months. I've been saved for five years. See, they were experiencing what it's like to be out of place. Amen. See, first, we saw the prodigal son wasn't where he needed to be at in order for him to get that that healing that he needed yeah. in order for him to become unbroken and in order for him to become mended 
And now we see that his brother, even though he looked like everything was all right, even though he'd been spending every day out in that field, honey, he was doing it for the wrong reasons. Yes. He wasn't there to serve his father. All he was worried about was getting what he could get. He thought that if he had stayed in those fields a little longer, that his daddy was going to give him a little more inheritance. Amen. Come on, bro. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. <laughs> Here he has run out there acting crazy. Wasted all of his riches, and they're throwing him a party. Amen. I've been working my tail off out in this field. I've been going to church after church. I've been preaching. I've been singing. I've been doing this. I've been praying for Come people, on. and yet I can't seem to get a break. I can't Come seem on, to get bro. a blessing. Well, honey, how can you expect to get a blessing if all you're focused on is yourself? Oh, man. Oh, you get oh, focused on God and get focused. Come on. Come on. Come on. And get focused on the joy that there is yes. when people enter into the kingdom. Yes. And get focused on the joy yes. that we've got to have yes. when the oh, yes. woo, when that one lost sheep returns back to the night. Oh, yeah. That's when you can experience that yes. life. Yes. See when when we're too worried about everybody else's blessing. Come on. Why do they get this and we don't? Come on. See if if. I'm going to use you as an example, sister. If the pastor felt like, well, why is this church down the road? They just started up and they got to build and give to them. Here we are sitting in a tent. And it's 50 degrees outside. Come on. That's all right with me, though, because when the spirit starts moving, I start pouring the sweat. Yeah. Here we are sitting in a tent. And they already got it. They got a sound system. They got TVs on the wall. They got pretty lights. Lots of instruments shining down. Can't catch a break. You see, it's that kind of mentality that will hold up the move of God. It's that kind of mentality that will put a block to the movement of the anointing. Amen. What are you talking about, preacher? How can we stop the anointing? Honey, if you don't believe that the Spirit is subject unto the prophet, then you need to go to the Word. You see, the anointing can only flow if there's obedience in the heart. The anointing can only flow if people get themselves in line with the Word of God and get... The anointing can only flow when we allow God to do the work. Amen. But if we spend our time acting like the prodigal son's brother, and we say, well, I can't believe they're throwing him a party, and it, it was to the point, he was so mad about it, he didn't even go partake in it. Amen. And he wondered, why am I missing out on my oh. blessing? Yeah. Why ain't I getting into that? Why don't I get to sit down and eat? Because you can't get yourself over there where you got to be at. Yeah. If you're where you're supposed to be, you're going to be seated down. Oh, oh, oh. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. If, he, if he had got himself where he was supposed to be at, oh. his father, I guarantee you already had his seat put prepared, probably right beside his brother yeah. or on the other side of yeah. him. Amen. I'd say that plate was sitting there already filled with all kinds of food, yeah. and he was ready just to welcome them both in and have a little bit of bonding going oh, on. But you see, he was so wrapped up in why he wasn't getting that blessing, yeah. why he come wasn't on. receiving it the I same way as somebody else. He couldn't get himself to the place that he needed to be at. Yes. Yeah. That's right. He was a broken man. Come on. He was a broken person that had not yet been lined back up for his healing. See, if he was where he needed to be at, he wouldn't have spent that time saying, where's my fat calf? Where's my robe? Where's my shoes? Where's my music? Where's my dancing? Instead, he would have shared some glory with his brother. He would have stepped on into that party. He would have said, Oh, thank you, Lord. My brother's returned home. We thought he was dead, but yet he lives. I don't ask to fear any longer. Instead, he was just focused on, well, the only reason he come back is because he lost everything. <laughs> so what? If that's what it took for God to open his eyes, at least he got his eyes open. If that's what it took to get him positioned to a place for healing, for restoration, for reinforcement, praise God for it. Thank you, Lord.
Who knows the mind of God? Amen. Amen. We never know what it's going to take. That's right. See, had he not been obedient and went back to his father's house and said, well, I'm just going to continue doing it my way. I'm going to brush that thought off. My daddy thinks I'm dead. He don't ever want to see me again. And he just brushed it off and said, I'll find some more work around here. I'll stay out here in these fields eating the scraps that the pigs won't even yeah. touch. I'll stay out here in these fields until I die. See, there's no way he could have become whole again. He would have had to continue to walk in that brokenness. Yes. The prophet Ezekiel was carried away in the spirit to a valley of dry bones. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. And as the spirit of God began to deal with him, see, Oh, thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. See, not only did those bones have to be laying in that valley in order for God to begin to prepare a restoration for them, but God had to get Ezekiel to that valley too. See, sometimes it takes God moving a man or woman of God in position to help somebody else get in position. If you've been laying around like a sack of dry bones for a while, maybe it's time you open up your ears to what God is having sent by your way. And he began to deal with Ezekiel and he said, can these bones live? And he said, Thou knowest, Lord. Amen. You know all things, God. Don't ask me, because you're the one that knows. Yeah. And he said, I want you to prophesy to these bones, Ezekiel. And I want you to tell them to live. And he began to prophesy to those bones. Oh, Can you imagine that? Standing out here, nothing in that valley but a bunch of dried up bones. Been laying that way for years. I felt like I preached to a few valleys of dry bones before. (laughs) Here Ezekiel was, and God said, tell them to live. Tell them to rise up. And as Ezekiel began to be obedient, he got himself aligned where God needed him to be at. Something started happening to the bones. There began to be a great shake and take place. And it says that those bones began to come together. And every man in that army began to rise up, bone to his bone, Amen. flesh to his flesh. Come on, Ooh. come on. Let's do it. Jesus. <laughs> you see, if there had been one bone missing, if there had been one bone out of place, them soldiers wouldn't have been able to stand back to their feet. If, if there had been one laying out there, and he'd been missing a femur bone, when he had went to stand up, he'd have been leaning. Amen. Oh, come on. Come on. You see, every bone had to be out there where it needed to be. You've got to have every aspect of your life fully devoted over to God before God can use you, before God can begin to restore you, before God can begin to reinforce you. If you've got one bone out of place, if you've got one area in your life where you're letting the devil run rampant and you're saying, it's okay, it's okay, I'm doing everything else I can. God will take care of that later. Yes. Honey, God ain't going to take care of it until you say, God, take care of that situation. God, show me what I got to do. God, help me get out of myself and help, and help me get back in your presence. Like the prodigal son, Father, I've sinned against you and I've sinned against heaven. Can you just make me a servant? Yes. Can you just make me a servant? Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Yes. Here's a little nugget, straight from straight from the Lord. You see, that prodigal son, he had got himself to the mindset. If I just want to serve. Yeah. I just want to be a servant. Yes. Lord, you make me the lowest of the low. As long as I'm in your presence, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready to serve. Ezekiel stood out before that valley of dry bones as a servant. See, Ezekiel was afraid to even speak before the presence of God. Yeah. Oh, come on, oh, come on. So much so that he wanted his lips touched with the coals off of the holy altar because he wouldn't even speak before God because he was an unclean man with unclean lips. He recognized that he was a fleshly creature. Oh, come on. Come on. Bless him, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
Yes. He got to that position of, Lord, I'm the lowest of the low. Just let me serve. Just let me serve. And so God took him to the valley and he said, prophesy. Yes. And God brought the prodigal son home. And he said, go prepare the fatted calf. Prepare the feast. My son who once was dead is alive. Yes. It's time to throw a party. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, See, if you didn't know this, any time a lost soul comes to Jesus, even the angels in heaven yeah, begin to rejoice yeah, yeah, yeah. and begin to cry out. Oh, yeah. Woo! You, because that means that's one more yeah. that the devil's lost. Come on. Amen. What are you talking about, preacher? I never was that bad of a person. I never was that ornery. I never did a whole lot. I just never came to church. If you didn't know Jesus, then you only knew the devil. Yeah. yeah. All right. If you're not serving Jesus, you're serving the devil. Come there on. is no in between. Come on. Amen. Preach it. See, God don't have no fence straddlers. <laughs> he don't have any of them who's got a leg over here that's willing to stand up. When, he, when he's looking for somebody to prophesy to some dry bones. And yet looking over here to stand up and bounce around when the world's got something going on. Come on. Come on. That ain't how it works. In fact, it'll come to the point where you have people desert you because you've got to be totally sold out for God. Yeah, yeah. come on. Whoa. That's right. And when you get around them wishy-washy Christians who think, who think that they're, they're all holier than thou and that they're going to be all right. Come on. Oh, That's good. <laughs> well, I still like to go and when I get around my friends, I like to tell dirty jokes. I like to tell them bad words. I like to go down here and get drunk a little bit. I like to go down here and get high a little bit. Honey, if you get around them kind of Christians, using the quotation marks, if you get around them kind of Christians and you're so down God, you're going to notice they begin to fall away yeah, because yeah. they get uncomfortable being around the presence of the anointing. Yeah. They get uncomfortable. Oh. Oh. Whoa, hallelujah. Oh. They get uncomfortable oh. when there's a spirit in the atmosphere oh. that lays a conviction on the soul. Yes. Just like that prodigal son, here he was sitting out in this barren field. I mean, he was trying to eat the scraps that even the pigs wouldn't have nothing to do with. And he was starving to death. There's so many people who call themselves Christians today that are starving to death. Yeah. Literally starving to death. Their, their spirit is not getting fed because either A, they tell themselves it is okay to dwell around with sin. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or B, they tell themselves it's okay to sit under the direction of somebody who says it's okay to dwell around with Ooh. sin. Oh. Oh. That's good. And they're starting to dry up. Yeah. They're not getting fed. See, you can't expect to get fed from an empty table. That's right. You can't expect to to eat the things that the pigs won't even touch Come on. and get some nutrients out of it. All that's going to happen is you're going to begin to wither up yeah. until you notice that your own spiritual walk has become nothing but a, a thing of the past, has become nothing but a thought. Amen. Good. Good. We got so many churches today. Bless the Lord. I'm not pointing out a particular church. I'm talking about the church body as a whole. Yeah. We've got so many churches today who wonder why are we not seeing people come in and get saved? Come on. Why is our congregation not growing? Why are we not seeing people get delivered? Yeah. Oh. Come on, brother. Why are we not seeing people healed and set free? Why is it the same? Five to six to twelve people that come out every single service. Why when we have a revival, we can't get no more than, than the same five people to come out? Come on. Preach. People's not gonna wanna go eat when they can't get no more. Hey. They're not gonna go eat when there ain't no life. See when you 
allow God to position you to heal that brokenness. You allow God to reinforce everything that the enemy has done to you and he restores you and then he reinforces you with more strength. And you allow God to, to dwell with you constantly and you walk in the abundance of life. Walking in the abundance of Jesus. Amen. Walking in the spirits of God. Woo. Walking under the anointing. Life is going to follow you. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm talking about the fruit that you bear. It's going to be fruit people want to eat. Yeah. It's going to be fruit that, that makes the sinner say, i got to get some of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fruit that makes the drug addict say, I need some of that. Come on. I'm tired of this. Come on. Kind of high. I need some Jesus. Yes. It's going to be fruit that makes the alcoholic say, I don't want this bottle anymore. I need to know who God is. Yeah. It's going to be the kind of fruit. It's going to be the kind of fruit that has to battle against demonic possession. It's going to be the kind of fruit. Amen. Amen. Anyway, I brought a few in my pocket. Bless him, Lord. If you don't think demonic possession is real, no. honey, you're sadly mistaken. No, the wall has been pulled over your eyes. If you think if you think that the devil quit, <laughs> if you think the devil quit taking hold of people after Jesus cast them into the swine, yeah. you're sorely mistaken. Yeah. Because he went on to tell them. Yes, come on. Come on. Now. That's work. He went on to tell them. After they said, why couldn't we cast them out? Why couldn't we do that? Why couldn't we get rid of them? Why couldn't we do that, Jesus? And he said, because this only comes through much prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. If you don't know what fasting means, that means you got to give up some flesh and let God have some more of you. That means you have to take time to push your plate back and say, God, you are more important than feeding this fleshly body. That means you got to take time to get over there where that party's going on with the prodigal son. Sit down at that spiritual table and say, feed me, God. Oh, hallelujah. We call it fast at church. People think you're of the devil. Amen. Somebody drinks coffee maybe twice a month. I ain't giving up coffee. That's what I'm fasting over. <laughs> I'm going to give up Facebook. I ain't had an account in three years and I ain't going to pick it back up. <laughs> See, there's a difference in getting rid of fleshly vices, things that distract you, and fasting. Yes. Come on. Come on. Reach it. Facebook, your cell phone, video games, your favorite kind of ice cream, your favorite candy bar, that cup of coffee. Honey, if you're only giving up one thing, <laughs> woo! All right, Lord. If you're only giving up one thing for Jesus, and it's just something. I don't ever remember reading in my Bible where any time Jesus fasted, he said, I'm going to quit with the hammer and nail for today, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to sit down and eat for a little while with John and Peter instead. I don't read anywhere in my Bible. I don't read anywhere in my Bible where when John oh, was out in the wilderness. When John the Baptist was out in the wilderness, he said, all right, I'm just going to give up locusts today. And I'm just going to eat some honey. I don't really care for that old locust, but I'm going to fast from it. And I'm just going to eat some honey today. That ain't how it works. You've got to be willing to give up and show God that you want fed in your spiritual body 
before you want fed in your fleshly body. Yes. You want to grow in your spirit before you grow in your flesh. Yes. Oh, well, I can't do that. I'm afraid what's going to happen. I got the diabetes, or I got this, that, and the other. I take blood pressure medication, oh. or I got to go over here and take a shot. Oh. Honey, if you got faith in Jesus and oh. you're your place oh. back for him, I promise you, he will not see you for Satan, but he will take care of you. Maybe through a little bit of obedience, when God says fast and you start fasting, you might experience what it's like to have that yoke of bondage of diabetes on your life broken off. You might experience what it's like to have that yoke of bondage of whatever problem you have to take your medication for broken away from you. If you didn't know that was bondage. God doesn't desire for you to be a broken person. He doesn't want us to be a broken people. He wants you to get yourself to the position where he can say, all right, let me look at this break. Come on. Just like them doctors. They take those x-rays. See, there's some kind of breaks they can see visibly on the outside. Some kind of breaks are so bad, the bone will protrude out. And they can see that. Yes. Or it's misshapen. And they can tell something's wrong. Yeah. But see, there's sometimes, especially them, them little hairline fractures. They don't even know they're there. Amen. They might think, well, that's just a bruise. You just got your sensitivity turned up too high. You just hurt a little bit. It'll be all right. But until they take that x-ray, they don't know. And then they take that x-ray and they get a C on the inside. See, God examines the heart. Amen. He starts looking on the yes. inside. Yes. He knows every ounce of brokenness you've experienced. Come on. He knows every ounce of brokenness you've went through. He knows every trial. He knows every heartache. He knows every financial burden you have. He knows every stressor that you have allowed to build up on your back. That you have just been packing around for so long. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. And when you get yourself positioned to where God wants you to be at, and you get yourself positioned where the blood is flowing, God can begin to examine on the inside. And He can begin to look and see what kind of break is this. Is this a, one of them little hairline cracks? They've been trying to keep it to themselves for so long. Or have they just absolutely been shattered? Come on. And then go in and do some surgery. And start putting them metal plates in there. Yeah. Start reinforcing your spiritual body. Or do they just need to sit and rest for a while? <clears throat> do they just need to get themselves in my presence and bask in there? Do they just need to rest in the Spirit of God? Yes. Oh. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. See, sometimes I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't have to spend their time sitting there crying out the same prayer over and over right. and over. They declared it in front of the king and everybody else. They yes. said, it doesn't matter. Come We're on. not going to bow down to you. You can throw us in that furnace. You can do with us whatever you want to. We're still going to serve God. Yes. We are yes. still going to hold true to the one who knows it all. Yes. To the one whose name is above all names. To the one who has been my provider. The one who's been my protector. The one who's been my shelter. On. The one who's been my oh, friend. Yes. The one who's been there through every storm. The one who's provided every financial need. The one who's provided every meal that I've needed. Amen. We're going to hold to him, King. Yes. And we don't care to tell you. Yes. See, they profess that. Amen. And then when they got thrown into that furnace... Oh, yes. Jesus. Says the king looked inside and he seen yeah, four on. men loosed and walking around. 
I believe when they were walking around in that fiery furnace, they were just having some fellowship with God. Yeah. I believe when they were walking around in that fiery furnace, they were just That's basking cool. in the presence of the Almighty. Yes. Just experiencing what it is to be standing in the presence of the supernatural. Yeah. To experience that life that God has. Sometimes we spend too much time asking. Not enough time closing our mouth and listening. Come on. Come on. That's right. Sometimes God will tell us something. Yeah. Bless him, Lord. And that old enemy. Whew, he'll come in and start bringing that doubt. Yeah. Just like the sissy testified about a while ago. He'll start bringing that doubt. And then we start questioning. We start questioning. See, if she had, if she had not got to that point where she realized, okay, I just got to stop Man. and stand still and just let God do what he's doing. Yeah. God's already positioned me and I've just got to let God continue doing the work. Amen. Let God continue doing the healing. Let God continue doing the building. Yes. Let God continue doing the restore. It's not going to matter what people say. It's not going to matter what people do. It's not going to matter what people think. Because what God wants is going to be as long as I get myself yes. in line with Amen. Him. As long as I get myself sitting at the table ready to celebrate. Amen. Yes. As long as I don't let those lies from the devil start defining my salvation. Right. As long as I don't let that brokenness. You see, after everything started going on this week, we could have let the enemy say, well, you might as well stay home Saturday. You've already had to make a big long trip. You've already had to head out of here. You might as well sit at the house, save your breath. I mean, do you even feel like going down there? Do you <laughs> even feel hard. like preaching? Woo. Come on. Did you see yesterday, I was standing out there. I was digging that hole to bury our dog. Here. And I began to shovel that dirt out. I kept thinking. God began to deal with me. His spirit began to move around and speak. And he kept saying, you can stand here and you can keep digging and digging and digging. But the only thing that's going to happen until you start putting that dirt back in is that hole is just going to get bigger. It's just going to get deeper. And you're just going to stand here and keep running out of energy. You're going to keep yes. getting yourself worn out. Oh, Come on. Thank you, Lord. See, it felt like every time I'd take another load out, it just didn't look like it was deep enough. I wanted to make sure when I laid him down there, it was gonna, you know, it was gonna be comfortable. It was, it wasn't gonna make him protrude out of the ground. I wasn't gonna have to worry about something coming along and digging him up. I wanted to make sure it was, it was dug right. And I, I got it, I got it down. I guess it was about three foot deep, and I, I just kept digging. I thought, well, maybe that's not wide enough. And it was just like God just began to speak and said, "You can keep digging, but that hole's only gonna get bigger." And you're just going to get more tired. And it was at that moment <laughs> when all that doubt Bless. began to start to wash away. Yes. And the Spirit began to rise up inside of me. Yes. And God sent some encouragement my way. Yes. And I began to get angry at the devil. And I began to and I began to let him know that it was time to start filling this hole back up. Yeah. I didn't care what we had been through. It doesn't matter how many attacks we had went through. Honey, I had a word inside of me. Oh, I wanted to make sure yes. that it was God's will. We was going to make it down here. Yes. 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 See, God spoke the title of this message to me last Saturday night in a revival. Man. He slain me out in the spirit and he just spoke. That's all he spoke to me. Just the title of the message. A broken bone will heal when it's set back in place. Amen. And I knew it was for a word. I thought, all right, Lord. Just show me. Yes. <laughs> Woo. 
I love how God works everything out. I love how God works everything out. Yes. How He can take every broken situation that we went through this week and yes. turn it around for a testimony for Him. Yes. How He can turn it around so we can give notice to the enemy yes. that we've still got a word shut up inside yes. of us like a Come fire on our bones yes. and it's just burning to get out. And now we're going to make sure it doesn't matter what kind of attack comes our way. My God is still God. My God is still powerful. He is still my El Shaddai. Yes. My provider. My Jehovah Jireh. He's still my protector. Ooh. He's my Jehovah Nisi. Yes. He's my covering. He's my all in all. He's everything that I need in them, son. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on.